Hi, I'm Jack Shelley and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be focusing on the strawberries, which is what you can see here. Now, what I'm going to be showing you is how to look after these strawberries when they're in fruit, so how to harvest them. I'm also going to show you some care and feeding tips on how to ensure your strawberries are producing right the way through the summer and are healthy and strong for the future. So at the moment, as you can see, these strawberries are covered by this frame. Now, what this is is the top of a greenhouse, and you can buy these walk-in greenhouses relatively cheap from garden centres and places like that and we've just taken the top half of it off and then we've covered it in a net rather than the actual greenhouse. Now what this does is it stops birds and pests such as squirrels getting inside and eating the strawberries. Of course you don't have to use a frame like this, it allows you to easily cover them and take it on and off relatively quickly and ensures that nothing's going to get into there or chew through it. Other options are just hanging CDs to deter birds or using deterrents. So what I'm going to show you first is how to know when your strawberries are ripe and ready to pick and then how to pick them as well. So these are our strawberries. Well I've removed the frame um, as you can probably see. Um, so now they're accessible to do any of the care you need. It's just really simple to lift it off. And... But what I'm going to be talking to you about first as I mentioned was the actual harvesting and how to know when a strawberry is ready, is ready for harvesting. Now, it can be quite tricky because you might think that some of them are quite ripe, but you turn them over on the other side are still, still really pale or almost white in colour. What you need to remember with strawberries is that as soon as they're soft to touch, relatively soft, and they're red all the way around, then you can harvest them. So we've got one here, which is this one. Now this is red all the way around. It's soft to touch in most places. Now, it's not fully ripe. I w you can eat it now. I wouldn't say it's, it's the best that it can be. What you can do is you can harvest this to save it from being damaged by the weather. And then you can, you can store it inside or you can put it in your fridge. And they'll ripen gradually over time as well. So you can harvest them when they're sort of like this colour, which is relatively pale. But they're going to ripen inside and ready for you to eat <coughs> in the next couple of days. Now when you're harvesting the strawberries, all you need to do is literally just separate them from the plant itself. So you've left a little bit of stalk at the top, that's going to help to keep them fresher for longer. You've left the green crown at the top of the fruit, again that's going to help keep it fresher for longer. And there is your strawberry, homegrown and they taste so much better. Now these ones here that we've got, they're, they're, they're red on one side but they're still very pale as well. And we've got a lot more pale fruit are coming through just starting to develop so they're going to be ready in a couple of days and the, the, the very pale fruit that's just started to develop will be a couple of weeks so we're going to have a decent crop carrying on at least for you know well into I'd say into August at least before this fruit starts to starts to slow down its production process So next what I'm going to be talking about is how to ensure that your strawberries are going to carry on producing fruit and producing the large fruits throughout the summer and the rest of the season. And now the way to do this is to ensure your strawberry isn't wasting its energy on producing runners or dead or damaged leaves. Now this is a really simple and quick process much like the harvesting. You don't need to put a lot of work or effort into it. All you have to do is you have to find the runners which are these long extended stems which are then going to form new plants, which we'll start to we we'll start to pot on later in the summer once our main crop is finished. We'll start to utilise these runners, and of course, we'll show you how to do that. But at the moment, while the strawberry plants are in fruit, these need to come off because otherwise, the strawberry is going to be putting all its energy into these runners and producing new plants, and it's not going to be putting the energy so much into producing nice fruit. Now, if you have dead or damaged leaves, such as these ones here, then these need to be cut off, again, to ensure your strawberry plant isn't wasting energy in trying to repair those damaged leaves and that they focus on producing the fruit, at least for the moment, anyway. So this long extended stem here is a runner, and you can see where the new plant is going to form at the end. Now, runners, if you let them to grow, will have multiple new plants dotted along the actual stem. Now, the best tool for getting rid of these is a nice sharp pair of secateurs or scissors getting in as close to the base as you can of the strawberry plant and literally just snipping it off. Now they're good for going on the compost heap as well. So there's quite a few in here that are just emerging as well. So try and cut as many off as you can as soon as you spot them. And as I said, that's going to ensure your strawberry isn't wasting its energy on producing new plants and it's going to carry on producing really strong fruit. Now what we've also got here is some damaged and half-eaten 
foliage, which, which isn't necessary at the moment because we've got this lovely new stuff coming through. So again, take the dead or damaged leaves right back to the crown and literally just snip them off. Again, they can go on the compost heap. Now, cutting these off is going to be quite a regular process, but if you're not looking to produce new plants and you're looking for a bigger, better harvest, then it's well worth your while doing this. I mean, the crop that we've got this year, I know they're in their second year, but carrying on with this process is, is really, really great. And the, the amount of crops that it's got on it at the moment is phenomenal. So it's a really, really good, worthwhile process if you're after those bumper crops. If you're after new plants and it's best to leave the runners, and as I said, we'll have another video later on in the season on how to on how to plant those runners and get your new plants. Now, when it comes to watering and feeding your strawberries, there's one key point to remember about the watering process. Strawberries are shallow rooting plants, which means their roots run along the surface of these troughs. It ensures that the plants are stable, but it also means they're gonna dry out very, very quickly because they're on the surface and they're getting that direct sunlight right onto the roots it dries them out really, really quickly. So in very dry weather, like we've got at the moment, where we're having highs of sort of 27, 28 most days, it's always advised to give them a really good soak in the morning and in the evening. When you're watering, it's a good idea to avoid splashing the fruit. If you start getting splashes of soil going onto the fruit or splashes of water getting onto the fruit, then they're gonna to start to rot really, really quickly. And obviously that's not good and it means you're not gonna be able to eat them. It's also a good idea to try and avoid the crown of the strawberry plants. Now this is the central point where all the new foliage and growth is coming from in the strawberries. If it gets too wet near the crown, the crown is going to rot and you're not going to have any strawberries or even any strawberry plants at all. So it's well worth your while taking a little bit of extra time and care and precision when you're watering these plants to ensure you're not damaging the fruit or the crown. Now when it comes to feeding them, just a general multi-purpose garden food, tomorite, miracle grow that you mix in with your ordinary watering can, anything like that is fine. Just a good general all-round fertilizer that has a good balance of NPK chemicals in there. What I use on these is my organic chicken manure pellets, as I'm sure you're aware. They're very good and they're useful for just about anything in the garden. So if you can get hold of some of those, they're great. They're a nice balanced feed and they last long as well. They're slow release, but they're also organic. So that's all we've got time for in this week's episode. I hope that we've shown you a little bit more about how to care for your strawberries, how to harvest them, so that you know when, is the, when the best time is to harvest your fruit, how to make sure you're gonna get the most out of your plants through the season. And I really hope that this episode has helped with that. Join me next Thursday when I have another update on another type of plant. And don't forget to subscribe and rate the video, especially on the new website. The new Horticultural Channel website is fantastic. It's got a rating system built in. You can watch all the videos on there. So pop over to the hortchannel.com and you can watch all the videos and catch up on all the latest there. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any comments about the video or any experiences that you would like to share with the other viewers on the channel, make sure you put a comment in the box below and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.